It's that candy fresh, got the new now next. If you a dope artist in the city, come on and get your shine on, get your shine on. Candy fresh, gon' show up, get your shine on. It's that candy fresh, got the new now next. If you a dope artist in the city, come on and get your shine on, get your shine on. Candy fresh, gon' show up, get your shine on. And welcome to our eighth episode of Candy Fresh in our brand new home. Give it up for that before we go any further. <laughs> My name is Sunny. And I'm Miss Britt. Hey, Twin Cities, we have a very special episode for you today with a lot of special guests. Up first, we have Kamani, the artist and entrepreneur with Elements by Kamani. And then later on in the show, we interview the father-son hip-hop mogul duo, Kaleem the Dream and Mastermind. Yes, we will also be interviewing photographer who has worked with CW Twin Cities, Go96, and a host of other big organizations, Mr. Chris McDuffie. And I also get to interview our in-house DJ right now, DJ, huh? <laughs> DJ what? Yeah. <laughs> Give it up for yeah. that. Make yeah. some noise for the DJ, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. He introduced himself. And then, of course, make some noise for yourselves. The live studio audience in the Twin Cities, we could not do this show without you, so make some noise for yourselves. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. We, we so appreciate you guys being there, and of course, all of you at home watching. So make sure you sit back and relax, because this is Candy, Candy Fresh. Fresh. Hey, what's up, y'all? And welcome back to Candy Fresh. I'm Miss Britt, and with me, I have Kamani of Elements by Kamani. He is an artist and an entrepreneur here to talk about the many business ventures that he's uh, participating in right now. So, first of all, welcome to Candy Fresh. Thank you very much and appreciate you having me tonight. It's an honor to have you. So tell us, what is Elements by Kamani? Elements by Kamani is a graphic design artist business that where we help to specialize custom branding for many companies across the United States and also internationally as well. And I understand one of your major clients is Zubas. Yes, Zubas United is one of our main clients, um, which is based out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. It is established here back in 1988. And what we were able to do is come in and create a secondary aspect to Zubas, which focuses in more on the cultural aspect, community um, involvement with artists and everyone that's involved, you know, activists and things of that nature. Can you tell us about some of the people that you've worked with on this Zubas project to help kind of push the brand forward? Um, many of our local Minneapolis talent, uh, Maria Issa, uh, Toki Wright, um, we've worked with uh, Carnage, um, uh, Teddy Grimes, many of our other artists here in the community that have been supportive and helped us out very much in building this platform and putting this together. And what would you say makes Zubas different from other brands or other clients even that you work with? What makes us different is what we want to do is just to be able to bring this establishment within the community on an international basis. We feel that what we need to do is start it from the inside and create it on the outside. We have so much talent here that's local that we don't need to go outside of, the, outside of Minnesota in order to find our talent because we have so much creativity here, so. Can we make some noise for the hometown talent here in the Twin Cities? We have one of the livest 
uh, group of artists here and uh, we definitely appreciate you showing the artists that are here love instead of them having to go other places to be shown the love that they definitely deserve. Uh, so tell us about some of the other work you do. Some of the other work it is that we do is um, branding for multiple companies. Um, we like to add flavor to other artists by bringing this platform, um, adding international resources from shipping and receiving to um, brand design and development uh, to bring that international feel and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Okay. So let's say, you know, just asking for a friend, I wanted to like, you know, import some hair or something like that. Is that something you could help with? Um, importing hair? Well, I don't know about that. So I much. mean, it's a part of my brand, so. Okay. Well, <laughs> I mean, we try to do the best it is that we can to get those goods and services and help out as much as we can on every platform. We do a lot of research, um, putting together the actual pieces and platform to help your business thrive and make it much more su successful. Um, it's uh, basically, we've been able to get these opportunities from the Zubas platform in order to create more of an international vibe and have those resources such as the licensing with um, most of the professional football teams and so on and so forth. Um, so. Yeah. <laughs> so actually the hat that you're wearing is a Raiders hat, but it's a Zuba's uh, flip on a Raiders hat. And so you all were able to work out how to get it licensed and you know, you ain't got nobody coming after you with a lawsuit or nothing like that, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And that was, that was the structure that was been able to uh, get established from Zuba's at the beginning in order to have Zuba's United to transition that down, um, get the licensing, working with you know, MLB, um, NCAA, all of those companies there. So, yeah, the stripes that it is that we have is something that carries on throughout the licensing, so. Excellent, can we make some noise for Kamani and the work that he's doing? <laughs> now you're also an artist as well, so tell me about your artistry. What is it that you do? How do you express yourself and where? Well, I get, I get my, my talents from my mother. Um, I started all of that. Um, she got the, the Macintosh computer in the home back in 1990. Just saw her do Mac. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yep, yep. The green screen, the Coral Draw, all of that, Adobe Illustrator. So it was working on all of that. And um, basically, those uh, skills were taught to me um, in the home. Um, that was something that was uh, given to us uh, back in 1990 so that she sewed, and, and that's how a lot of my talents have come about, um, being able to uh, get the push from the community that has wanted me to pursue um, the apparel and graphic design mm -hmm. um, industry. Um, those talents uh, have just been able to flourish since the, uh, I'd say about the mid 90s. So um, from that point, um, I just was very inspired by everybody that is believing in me and, you know, just turning around to make sure that I give that back and create these platforms and, and to do the best that it is that I can to provide something for our much needed Minneapolis that we got going on. I love it. Make some noise for having friends that support your dreams. That's so incredibly important. Make some noise, y'all. Incredibly important. Now, I can't wrap up this interview with talking about your other art form, which is dance. So let's talk about this for a minute. When, when, when did you start? Where did you learn? Give me some info. Well, I started b-boying since cardboard. And I mean, we can put that date on. Uh, I don't know if I need to be putting my age out there, out but um, I've, uh, I've, I've been so much involved in the, in the arts of um, the culture, hip hop, everything um, since pretty much 1979, um, I saw everything coming up. It was roller skating all the way down to the first records, everything that was, you know, I didn't really want to get down with what my brother was doing. He was more the rock and roll head, you know, he was doing all of that. So I had to, you know, kind of push on. And some of those, um, some of those, uh, what I should say, the, the feel of the, the rhythm and the rhyme just came real early and naturally, and it stayed with me. My father uh, was a big influence as well, um, creating 
Twin Cities Teen Club back in 1987, mm. which was a, a 16 to 20 club that was established for just teenage kids. So it was just a real live, fresh, fresh environment. We had um, a New York City DJ that came in, Doug Davis, Minneapolis known as well, and he would bring the records in. Um, everybody from the, the, the KMOJ personalities back in the day, you know, Cuboid Banks, yeah. um, Mike, uh, Mike Mack, everybody, they would come mm -hmm. and they would, you know, get down with us. So um, that was a very big part of my life. You know, my father uh, believing in the community. Um, the club was in Fridley, Minnesota at the time. And when he put that together, that was, that changed everything for me. That's what did it. Yeah. And yeah. here you are today. So tell us, where can people find out more about the work that you do, whether it's Zubas or Elements by Kamani? Uh, you can check out um, Zubas United um, on every platform, social media, um, Facebook, um, uh, Twitter, Instagram, um, all the platforms. Our website is zubasunited.com and um, EBK, Elements by Kamani, is a platform that you can find also on Facebook as well. Excellent. Well, we want to thank you so much for stopping by Candy Fresh, and we're going to make sure we post all of that information on our social media. But for now, make sure you keep it locked because we got a whole lot, whole lot more show for you coming up next. This is Candy Fresh. <laughs> Welcome back to Candy Fresh. I'm Sonny. And with me today, I have a photography go getter. He has worked for Go 96, right? C CW Twin Cities, uh, ESPN, New York Times, just everybody. Please, everybody, give a warm welcome to photographer Chris McDuffie. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for coming on the show. You, we didn't cut into no, no appointments or nothing, did we? No, we're good. We're good. Okay, okay, all right, good. So first question at the gate is, tell us when you knew you wanted to be a photographer. What was that moment when you was a kid, when you figured it out, you want to be a photographer? It wasn't one moment. I was always the artsy kid. I was always drawing or painting or working with clay. I was a band nerd. Before I got into photography, I was doing sneaker customization, so painting and doing fabric on shoes, and I had to take pictures of shoes, and that's kind of how it started. Okay. So I was going to ask you, out of all of the art that you've done, why was it photography out of all the art that you kind of were like, yep, this is it? I think it was kind of a natural evolution into yeah. photography. Okay. All right. So every guest that comes on, I ask them a sweet question and a fresh question. So my sweet question is this. How do you know when you're taking your photography when you really hit that sweet spot? Ooh, I don't know if there's one moment. <laughs> Usually it's kind of when we're reviewing pictures and we're like, oh, that's the one. Is, right it, there. is it a? Is it some? Is it something you see with your eyes? Is it a team of people that see it? Is it something you, that you're like, nope, this is it, or? Usually just me. Okay. I know. I know. Okay. Okay. He knows. Okay. Well, now to, on to the fresh question. So tell me something fresh that's happening for you. Like, what projects are you working with? What big name are you working with now? No big names right now. Okay. Uh, I did recently sign with a new rep, so we're pitching client work to uh, really big clients. I'm, I'm excited about that. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I guess I guess we could I could I could ask you this. So, who what has been your most exciting project when you when you first started out and you started working with these different companies? What were you like? Ah! You had one of those moments. I think <laughs> maybe it wasn't like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think the first really big one uh, was the Timberwolves dancer. So I do the calendar every year, nice. uh, and that was probably the first really really big one where I was like, okay, we're onto something here. Okay, Y'all give it up for McDuffie, yeah. Timberwolves. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so last question. Where can we contact you? Because you have great, great work. Like, it's, it's, I was looking at your website. It's, it's just, it spans from, it goes everywhere. It's, it's like super, like, magazine. I don't know the terminology that you would use as a photographer. But if somebody wants to be down with the Chris McDuffie, how would they contact you? All social media platforms. I was Snapchatting earlier, McDuff Photo on Instagram, the email info at chrismcduffy.photography. Chrismcduffy.photography is the website. I'm, I'm everywhere. Okay. Anything else you want to throw out at the, at the Candy Fresh audience? No, thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you. Y'all give it up for McDuffie. <laughs> McDuffie Photography. Yeah. It's that 
candy fresh, got that new now next. If you were those honest in the city, come on and get your shine on, get your shine on. Candy fresh, come show up, get your shine on. And we're back here on Candy Fresh. My name is Miss Britt, and with me today, I have a father and son hip hop mogul duo. I have Nick Mastermind Mohammed to my right, and to my left is Kaleem the Dream, of course, the son of this duo. Welcome, gentlemen, to Candy Fresh. Honored Thank to you have for you both us. here. Thanks this is a very us. special thing that we're doing. So I'm going to go to the dad first because he's older. He was here first, <laughs> really? you yeah, know. <laughs> If, hey, I mean, if we want to do rock, paper, scissors or something, this, we, this, ain't, we straight, we straight. this ain't Maury or no family feud ready. or nothing. We're going to need to keep it, keep it together, gentlemen. We got it, we got it. All right, so Mastermind, tell yes, me yes. about uh, who you are as a musician. As a musician, um, I'm your, your, your dedicated MC. I, I started off in hip-hop listening to everybody from Slick Rick, Queen Latifah, MC Light, run DMC, you know, and so for me, the romance with the culture at the time, you know, back in St. Paul, Dale Street, long time ago, that's all we, we did was listen to music. And I remember the first time I ever noticed that I could write a rhyme, it was in a poetry class. Shout out to Miss Robinson, <laughs> Webster Magnet. Shout out to poetry classes. Shout out to poetry classes. And I, I wrote a piece and they actually published a book for us and took it home. Mama was proud, I was like, hey, I, 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 I could do this. Mm -hmm. And it escalated into rhymes. But yeah, I've been a, a writer, attended St. Paul Central High School where I home my St. Paul in the building. Shout out to St. Paul. You, I see some St. Paul, po right. Paul folks here. And in that class, shout out to Red Freeberg. He would have us a whole studio full of young aspiring artists. And we learned everything from recording engineering um, way back in the day when they had reel to reels all the way up to the digital age and you know it's been on ever since it's just a passion for mine so but you're not just an MC you're also mm -hmm. uh, an activist and a very active man in the community go ahead and talk about some of that work as well 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 the the so in art you know you you talk about a lot of different things mm -hmm. and there was a tour that I went on in 2000 and I want to say 4 and that tour took me from, uh, we did nine cities from uh, North Minneapolis all the way out to Camden, New Jersey. And the only uh, caveat of being on a tour is we had to do a little bit of voter registration. Dope. Every neighborhood we went into was completely dilapidated. Hmm. And when we talked about why they were there, I couldn't help but notice the correlation in the way that people were di di disconnected from their local political structure hmm. and didn't have their power in their hands. So by the time I got to Camden, I was so mad that I said, whatever happens, I'm gonna go back to Minnesota and I'm gonna get involved in every single aspect of my, my community, my political structure, and they're gonna, they gonna regret the day hmm. that they left us Y'all gonna, so gonna learn today. That's what Nick, Nick Mastermind Mohammed yeah. said. Make some noise for this man right here. <laughs> Excellence at work. I love it, I love it. Now, Kaleem the Dream, yeah, yeah. We've, we've heard from your dad. How much of what he does rubbed off on you? You know, uh, a lot of it besides the political stuff, no offense to it, you know what I'm saying? I still support that too, it's just, you Not know. your thing? Yeah, so, um, right. you know, I've been doing music since I was like literally this tall. Well, probably not doing the music, but wanting to be a rapper, so yeah, it's... Uh, been a long, a long dream of yours, yeah, and now you're finally definitely. doing it with Titan Administration. Yeah. But I understand you're also getting ready to do something on your own. Tell us about it. Yeah, um, Kalina Dream. I'm just, you know, uh, linking up with other local artists around the Twin Cities. You know, shout out to Malik Curtis, shout out to Lucian Parker, Najee, Stevie. You know, um, we've been working for a long time, like two years it's been, and mm -hmm. we've just been building, you know, trying to get with this wave that's been going in Minnesota. So, yeah. Excellent. And what's the goal? The goal, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to make as much noise as possible and, you know, make Kaleem the dream and my whole team a uh, stamp in Minnesota and around the world, actually. That's I love it. I love it. Can we make some noise for Kaleem's dreams real quick? <laughs> Very good. Now. What is it like having a father who's also an MC and very well known within uh, the industry you're trying to work in? What has that experience been like for the both of you, uh, actually? It's, actually it, it's cooler than, you Dad's know. Dad's laughing, so. <laughs> it, well, because, you know, in the beginning, it's like, you know, I wasn't that good. Then I start getting good. Then it's like, you know, we got to comp compete. 
and you know we'll go, get on tracks and it'll be like you know who's gonna bring the hardest verse it'll be uh -oh. times we writing in the room and I'm like hearing what he's spitting and I'm like you know what I'm done you had that track <laughs> or I do the same thing and he'll quit it it's whatever you know friendly competition but it's fun friendly that, family yeah. competition yeah. I love it dad what's yeah. your experience been uh you know <laughs> You know, I, for me, uh -huh. I started off with him on this journey. The mm -hmm. first time I kicked down the sandcastle just to see how serious oh, he was. No, he didn't. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I want to make sure he's really ready. Okay. And to, you know, my surprise and everybody else, he doubled down, dedicated himself. Thank and you. I'll just say, uh, <clears throat> I have retired from battling this young man. Okay. Uh, I think he's ready. I'm, I'm no slouch, okay. but, uh, you know, he knows it's, it's tight over this way if he ever want to bring it. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah. it, it's, it's real like that, but that's a part of the hip-hop culture that we wanted to make sure we kept alive, that friendly competition in between father and son. They know it's not going to go anywhere negative, but mm -hmm. we always push each other. Yep. Excellent. Shout out to Tribe Bishop, the X Factor in the matter. Yes. Yes. Between the three of us, we do some incredible sessions. Y'all, we're going we gonna to share with y'all later. And, yeah. and while we're on the subject, tell us about Titan Administration. Titan Administration. So this was a label that we established almost three years ago. Okay. Um, we had about eight releases and um, they included a collective of some artists that we were working with at one time, the cabinet, um, shout out to Lioness, shout out to Felix, shout out to Tribe Bishop, shout out to Jay, uh, Mike Titan, shout out to El Mahmoud El Kati who made an appearance. Yes. Um, we also had Lioness release her mixtape Queen uh, that year. Uh, shout out to BON DJs that released. I uh, released a mixtape uh, in collaboration with Soul Tools. Soul Tools, Soul Tools. So we've been we've been around for a minute, and and he's definitely the next phase of that. So, you know, Titan as a label, we're all about big dreams, big goals, big spirit, big positivity. You know, and the Titans can only defeat themselves. So we felt it was appropriate mm. for Bars. for us to bear Bars. that moniker <laughs> and carry that weight for the culture of hip hop. I love it. So tell folks, where can they hear more of your music, find out about the work that you're doing? How do they get in contact with you? Uh, SoundCloud, Kaleem the Dream. That's K-A-L-E-E-M, the Dream. Um, Twitter, Kaleem the Dream underscore. spelled the same way. Uh, yeah. That's and you can follow Titan Administration on Facebook or Twitter, uh, Titan Administration Records or TAR Records. Uh, and you can follow me, Nick Mastermind Muhammad, on Facebook or Mastermind13X on Twitter. I'm working on the, uh, the, the, what do they call it? The Snapchat. Oh, Lord. You don't need to work on that. You don't. I'm going to do it. They don't do scare that. me. Good I'm going to do it. Yeah. Good for They're you. They're trying to ban me. They can't stop me. All right. Well, last question for the both of you. Y'all got to kind of do this collaboratively because we're running out of time. Okay. Top five rappers, dead or alive, go. Dead or alive? Why you got to do dead, dead or, or alive? alive? Okay. So I'm going with most deaf. Okay. I'm going with Nas. Okay. I'm going with Kendrick Lamar. Boom. I'm going with Biggie. Okay. Got them bars. And then I'm going to close it out with my son. I love it. Oh. Y'all think I'm playing. You're going to see. This is, not, this is not some tender stuff. You're going to see. Yeah. So uh, top five. Dead or alive, you know, no order. This is a lot of pressure, by the way. So, uh, Kendrick Lamar, okay, Jay Z, yeah, Eminem, hmm. uh, no shade. <laughs> see, now we at this last okay. two. The last two is the hardest, <laughs> and you don't got to put me in there, Nas. Um, <laughs> and shoot, man, why? Why? Everybody's great, everybody's just doing great. You know who okay. you should put? Who me. Brit, okay. There yeah. we go. <laughs> yep, there we go. We he was so five. confident when exactly. he said that. <laughs> exactly. Brit in reality. You know. Oh, man. Well, if you didn't get to see who, you, if you don't know who your top five rappers are, you're going to see just how great these two are standing next to me in just a moment. Make sure you keep it locked because they're going to be performing live right here on the stage in just a little bit. You're watching Candy Fresh. <laughs> Welcome back to Candy Fresh. I'm Sonny and <laughs> I'm Sonny. And and with me today I have just all around. I don't know, I feel like I get all the super de duper hustlers on Candy Fresh. This brother is a DJ. 
This brother is a radio station manager for WEQY 104.7. You are also a program director for New Lens Urban Society, working with the babies. And that's just the, the main three I've seen on Facebook. So before we get deep into detail, y'all give it up for DJ, huh? DJ what? AKA Glow. That's what they call you. Thank you so much for joining us here on Candy. Thank you for having me here. Thank you for having me here, man. I'm I'm gig. I, I didn't even know I was getting interviewed. I I was so into this, what I was doing right here, right here though, that I forgot that I was about to have an interview. So thank you for reminding me. Can you do a little improv? Because you do everything else. I do I do a little improv every now and again. Okay. <laughs> All right. So first question I'm sure that is on everybody's mind. When do you sleep? <laughs> I've been working on that. You know what I mean? Like, I've been having some health things going on because of sleep deprivation. Mm -hmm. So I've been kind of slowing down and trying to do what I do in pockets. But the, the, but the thing about it is, is that I don't consider none of this work. Like, it's my purpose. So when it's my purpose and my purpose is counting on me to be in that pocket, it's like, mm, sleep be kind of like, yeah, I can wait or whatever, because it's not like I got papers to push. I got babies counting on me. You know what I mean? I got people counting on me to be creative, to, to, to give them more opportunities and things like that. And it's just kind of like, I just can't go to sleep and be like, oh, the boss will get that tomorrow. That's not what I do. You That's because you is the boss. You know, yeah, pr pretty much <laughs> for the most part, and most of the things I do, but it's like people are counting on me. Babies are counting on me. So it's kind of like, I hear you about the sleep thing, but I don't. Because when I do what I do and these kids' lives change, it makes me want to keep going and keep doing what I do. And I hear it all the time. Well, ain't going to be no good in the grave. Well, if I change a thousand lives before I go and it's how, that's how I go out, then that's how I go out. There's worse ways to go out than changing somebody's lives. And that's just how I feel. Give it up for that. That's super positive. That's super positive. So. Like everybody standard, I always ask a sweet question sweet. and a fresh question because we can't be fresh. So first sweet question, out of everything that you do, and I think I may know the answer just based on that last yeah. answer, but out of everything you do, what is the sweetest thing you do? I mean, your sweet spot where you just, you could be dead tired, but nope, I'm going. Like, like you said, I rhyme, I DJ, I make shows, I manage radio stations. I'd give it all up, and I'm starting to give it all up for the babies, man. That's it. That's the only thing that matters to me. Like, my passion has been overcome by my purpose, and they're starting to merge. So I used to be, you know, I'm a rapper, you know, I'm an MC. I, you know, then I got into DJing by just by being pissed off at people DJing at my parties. That's the only reason I started DJing. This wasn't my thing. Like, I didn't have So you just got mad and was like, man, move out the way. Let me do it. Like, that's what you're going to play right now? The dance floor was just packed, and that's what you're going to play right now? <laughs> and I'm about to pay you $200 at the end of the night of my money? Oh, no, I'm about to DJ. I didn't have no equipment, no nothing. But it's like working for these young people, man, and seeing them, especially years later. I've been doing this for years. So seeing kids five, six years later, and they taller than me, and they like, Mr. Glow, you were the person that encouraged me to do this. I was like, man, I'll give it up. I'll, I'll give it up all for that. You know what I mean? All that. Worth it. Give it up for that. Give it up for that. Working with the babies. And you know it's good for them to see that you're actually that you're actually into something and it's a passion. It's not because you're looking for the money. Not yeah. that looking for the money is bad, but that they're seeing you be that you, the things that you're doing and the work in the community is based upon passion. So well, see, that's the thing though. Like I did it for like a year and something for nothing. You know what I mean? So it's because of that dedication and the things that I was doing that the ED was like, yo come come on to this and help me like make it better or whatever so i kind of earned my spot through being committed and compassionate about these kids man and just going in or whatever with no you know in higher up working up in mind you know what i mean it's just just what my heart was telling me to do and i did it all right so out of everything that you're doing because you're doing so much and i think you're being modest i know your social media i've seen it and i'm pretty sure everybody in here has seen it because you know everybody so real talk, one of the things that I really like about you, I do hear a lot, I'm from Chicago, and so I'm from, I'm from the go, and so, <laughs> and so I hear a lot of negative things about Minnesota mm -hmm. from people who are from here, from people who are not from here, but I, I always hear you big enough the cities. So my question to you is, what is the freshest thing about the Twin Cities? Because you know everybody, you connected to everybody. Right off the top of your head, what's the freshest thing in the Twin Cities? What do you love the most about the Twin Cities? The freshest thing about the city to me is the people, right? And Give it up for that. He talking about y'all, man. He talking about y'all. No, but the thing is, is like, we don't understand. Like, we're so, we, we feel so marginalized because everything is so white, but we don't understand that 
that's our opportunity to carve our niche instead of falling in line, right? So all I see is like when you go to big cities, I lived in LA, I, you know, I've seen all that stuff and been to other cities in the shy, whatever, and it's so big and there's so much going on or whatever. So it's like you're, you, you become, you know, a million in one versus one in a million. Where here, you start doing something, you can carve your own niche because chances are nobody else is doing it. You know what I mean? And so you can build something for your people. It can actually work and have an impact and you can lift the city up and make it what it is inside of there. Just like my man was saying, like we don't have to go outside Minnesota for nothing. Like we can build right here. Like I'm building my legacy here. You know what I mean? And, it, and, it's, and it's evident from the things that I'm doing because of the doors God keeps opening for me because I'm in that, that 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 purpose and like yo i moved from california and when it's winter and my tires are spinning in the driveway <laughs> i think about it just a little bit like I'm man like i did not have this problem in cali but everything that i've done since i've moved here i just moved here on faith i didn't have no job lined up no nothing i said i'm going back to help my community um and that's what i did and, and i wouldn't i wouldn't change it for the world i left the biggest record label in the world to come here and to build something for my people well what, what was the record label universal so Universal Houses, Shady, Interscope, A&M, Motown, Aftermath, anything you could probably name, they're like buying it up, they're creating a monopoly or whatever. And so um, it was just one of them things where it's kind of like, yo, do you want to be successful? Do you want to have a successful life or a substantial one? And there's a difference. And I chose substance, man, and I never looked back. And my substance became success because I chose it. I love that you said that. I, I, Y'all give it up for him for that. I love that you said that. That's, 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 a, that's a different type of mindset. Because you could totally just run away and be like, man, ain't nothing here. Or you could see it as opportunity. Man, I was kicking it, man. Yeah. I was kicking it. T-top Thunderbird, you know what I mean? Coming outside in the morning, I used to yell California. I used to wake up the day because I'd be like, California, woo! Every morning, my son used to think I was crazy and I just loved it that much. So when I got presented with that, yo, substantial success, and I was like, yo, I want substance, you know? And I just did it and bam, man, here we go. How can we contact you so we can find you all over the city? At Glow Pesci, man, at Glow Pesci on Facebook, at Glow Pesci, on uh, Twitter, um, that could be under Paul Bearer too. P A U L B E A R E R. Paul Bearer, Saint Paul Bearer. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's, it's always Glow Pesci, man. So you put in Glow Pesci or anything packed material, and I'll come up. All right, well, I'm gonna let you get back to your DJing, and we're gonna let you get back to this Candy Fresh. Y'all give it up! Give it up! It's that Candy Fresh, got that new now next. If you were those honest. Ah. Uh. Kaleem, Kaleem the dream. How y'all feeling out there? Y'all good? That's good, man. Shout out to Candy Fresh. Shout out to everybody for having me here, man. I appreciate it. This is a single off my EP that I'm dropping June 4th, so stay tuned for that. Show up to the Amsterdam if you can. Uh, check. Look. Uh, alrighty, you got my word. I swear you got my word. I promise to be the best Twin Cities has ever heard. Just lend an ear, let me fill them with these verbs, okay? The flow superb, all right, now what's the word? The kid at it again, leave them shark like static in here. Oh yeah, we at it this year. Twin Cities never had a sweet 16, but the 16 sweet like whipped cream. Oh, that's just to top it off. I can't wait till I'm topping charts from kicking it smoothly like martial arts. Martial Mads is the way they act, and these people shady. So I shine like diamonds off attention, you pay me. It don't don't cost much, I make your wild worth it. I hit the track with more soul than black churches. And shout out to P Soul, we back working, back serving at real service. Come purchase, yeah, I tell them come purchase. And I'll supply your every need Hoping that my mind don't get poisoned to the greed as I proceed. Man, nobody stressing me, let it breathe. Yeah, uh, check. Good witness, good vibes, good living. Good witness, good vibes, good living. Good witness, good vibes, good living. Check. Uh, alrighty, you got my word. I swear you got my word. I promise to be the best MC that you ever heard. Uh, look, shoot for the moon, hit the stars. 
Check. Okay, I made a promise to myself way back when to be the greatest rocking stages for my time group then. And that I'll never have to work and be a corporate slave. State to state treating shows like they minimum wage. Mom and dad, they won't have to work a day in their life. I'm gonna take my girlfriend and turn her into a wife. Take my brothers and my sisters, let them chase their dream. Let them know that they the future face of kings and queens. Take my high school homie, let them know that we fam. And I still got your back on anything that I can and for my homies grinding with me now chasing the mill we selling out the target center just cuz we that deal for real check uh. and we supply your every need hoping that my mind don't get poisoned to the greed as I proceed man nobody stressing me let it breathe yeah uh. good riddance good vibes good living Good witness, good vibes, good living. Say, good witness, good vibes, good living. Kaleem the dream. And, and. That's right. One, two, one, two. Where we at? Where we at? Hussein in the city where they bang, bang. OC like a freight train, but the main thing trying to maintain through pain. Game rain, make an Angus famous, flow dangerous, heinous, no flaws in kamikaze, brainless. Panic, don't pay me wages, I'm a titan, no need for saving. Now who's saying? Only God can judge me, know my mama love me. Gotta find my beauty in a world of ugly, no photoshopping. I'm a walking monument. <laughs> Living scripture, ghost da Vinci, keep my picture. The black is heretic, swan, they so arrogant. When they lost me, third eye is closed. Think your two eyes can't see the um dawn. No light, no light. Will it show your mind not too bright? But I must digress, I can hit him in the chest like bullets. Only the truth when I'm pulling and bucking. Deep in your soul like I'm looking for something. Right that, 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 Greatness to be amazing, to be an inspiration to billions. Twist T's your construct, and it's all in their feelings. We the live thing in this building. Ah. Yeah. It's that candy fresh, got the new now next. If you were those artists in the city, come on and get your shine on, get your shine on. Candy fresh, come show me up, get your shine on. It's that candy fresh, got the new now next. If you were those artists in the city, come on and get your shine on. much for joining us on this episode of Candy Fresh. It's a really important episode because we are finally home at our SPNN studio. Y'all yes. give it up for that alone. We've been all over the Twin Cities and now we are finally home. So yeah, want to make sure we also show some love to photographer Chris McDuffie for stopping by, mm -hmm. as well as our in-house DJ. Oh, give it up for Chris. Oh no, I'm not bad. And also our in-house DJ. DJ, huh? DJ, what? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's me. Well, we also want to send a very special thank you to all of the artists that dropped by. Up first, we want to say a special thanks to Kamani. Make some noise for Kamani. All right, Kamani. Coming by. Yeah. Elements by Kamani doing their thing. And then we also want to send a very special thank you to Kaleem the Dream and Nick Mastermind Mohammed for their performances and the yeah. interviews. <laughs> We also want to do a little impromptu we love you to Miss Britt because today she just got proposed to. Uh, yes, yes, yes. That is oh so sweet. Do your Beyonce now, do your Beyonce now. So give it up for that. And also Thank make you. sure you follow us on Twitter because we're going to be posting that all night. <laughs> make sure you uh, like our fan page. Uh, it's Crownlands Media Group. That's yes, right. That's on right. Facebook. Right. And uh, yeah, before we go, we want to make sure you give it up for yourselves, Candy Fresh audience, because yeah. without y'all. And all you watching at home. Yeah, man. man. We wouldn't, it wouldn't be the same experience. It wouldn't be the same without y'all. Thank y'all so much. Until next time, make sure you be good to yourselves and others. You're watching Candy, Candy Fresh. <laughs>